Hi, welcome to Management 1000, Spreadsheets 101, and we'll look at best practices for developing your spreadsheet. Okay, so here's a problem we want to look at. We want to build a spreadsheet model to help uh, come up with a bid to build a wall. We have two options for the wall, concrete or brick. Uh, the teams or the walls will be built by teams of two laborers, and each of them will work uh, three eight hour days and they'll get paid uh, ten dollars an hour and we have to add twenty percent to the wages to cover the overhead so that takes care of the labor piece we have the materials for the wall each wall is uh, twenty feet by six feet by two feet and then we have um, the cost of materials so we have concrete is three dollars a cubic foot and bricks are two dollars a cubic foot and we must add a uh, margin of thirty percent to our expected costs to come up with our final bid number. So it seems like a fairly straightforward problem, and it is. So let's uh, flip over to Excel. This is easy enough to calculate in Excel. Let's see, we can just press equal sign to start typing in our formula. Well, we have a 30% premium, so that's 1.3 times. And then the two pieces of cost, our materials cost and labor cost. So material cost, we have 20 by 6 by 2 is 120 times 2 is 240 cubic feet times material. Let's do brick, $2. And um, then we got to include the labor cost. Well, there's a 20% markup on labor. And we got two guys times three days times eight hours a day times $10 an hour. And balance off our brackets there. And we get. $1,372.80, and this is our brick. And then concrete. Well, it's exactly the same thing, so we'll just copy that down. The only difference is that instead of $2, it's $3, and we get $1,684.80. So these are the correct numbers for our bid. The problem is, is that we don't know really what they mean. Yes, we know right now because we're looking at the problem right in front of us, but if you came back to this in a few weeks' time, you'd have to look at this formula and go, wow, where'd this 240 come from? It must come from somewhere in here. And I've got a value of two here and I have a value of two here. Which one refers to the two laborers and which one refers to the $2 uh, a cubic foot for the brick? And likewise, you can see the same kind of problem here. We have a three here, and I have a three here. You know, there's no units of measure, there's no context around these numbers. If any of these things should change, if our labor rate went from $10 an hour to $11 an hour, again, we'd have to go right into the formula, hunt down our so-called magic numbers, which are buried in our formulas, and make those changes. So let me show you. Uh, another way of solving the problem. This is how I chose to solve it. And it's probably overkill for a problem of this simplicity, but it illustrates a number of uh, key ideas. So let me just talk about these uh, to get us going. The first thing you'll note is I've sort of modularized everything. So there's a chunk of cells over here and a label saying the parameters module. So these are the values that we get from our problem, and every single value is broken out here. We also have all of our units of measure. We have a second module over here where we actually do the bid calculations. So that's uh, one thing that you'll notice. Another thing you'll notice is values which are just straight numbers just show up in black. Values which are calculated get a little special treatment and they show up in blue. So this way I can tell that this 48 is a calculated value and you can click on it and see that it is in fact a calculated value and you can see that this 8 is not a calculated value. Just by looking at it you can see these guys are not calculated, they're just straight numbers. This guy's calculated. So anywhere you see blue that indicates it's a calculated formula. The other thing you'll notice for example, the wall volume here, here of 240 cubic feet that I've calculated, the only thing that's in this formula are references to other cells. Just references to other cells. So there's no magic numbers. Now you might click on a cell like total labor cost 
and say, yeah, but look, you have this number one in here. Isn't this a magic number? Well, I suppose you could argue that, but it's since it's tied into this percentage, it's fairly well understood. So you want to have formulas which only have references to other cells in them. The other thing I've done is when I've calculated my final bid over here, again, it's blue because it's a calculated value. It's also important, so I gave it some, some bold, whoops, so that it really pops out. And of course, my units of measure here. Now let me show you some student work. Look at, uh, let's look at uh, student number one and their solution to the problem. And you'll note that uh, they've put some information up here at the top that indicates the, uh, the title and, and the authorship. They've done a modular type approach where we've broken out the costs or the bid for the brick wall and the uh, likewise the, the calculations for the concrete wall. And you'll note that um, the information is in here. So you've got you know, $2 for the brick wall uh, per cubic foot times 240 cubic feet. Now the actual 240 cubic feet isn't calculated anywhere. And you'll note in the formula for this cell, they've got what I call magic numbers. So we've got 240 and we have two. So we know where they come from from this description, but really these should can tell, contain references to other cells on the spreadsheet. And one, uh, one thing that the student, or an erroneous thing that they made here was they said that the uh, overhead was 30% of wages. In fact, it's only 20%. So you can see in here they've got 0.3, and uh, that's messing up their calculation. We fixed it up to make it 0.2, then you'll see the exact same value that we calculated on the previous page. So there we go. Um, and again, this uh, value, this point three, isn't anywhere on the spreadsheet. It's, it's buried in the cell here. And uh, they've got the right 30% for the uh, profit margin. And likewise down here, this point three should really be Point two. There we go. And if we were actually making this whole thing totally correct, we'd want to make sure that we fixed up our labels as well. Because if our label says 30%, but our formula only says 20%, there's going to be some confusion between these. So again, we can fix it up and uh, sort that mess out. So all in all, uh, pretty good. I would avoid the, uh, the magic numbers in here, for example. We're seeing, you know, 24 times 10. Well, I know that I've got, uh, you know, $10 an hour and three eight-hour days. Um, so we have the magic numbers. Probably better to break those out to cell references. But again, in a simple problem like this, it's not that big a deal. If this were a large spreadsheet used by a large number of users, so every month the sales guys come in and update their sales figures and so on, uh, then it'd be a bit more of an issue. Okay. Whoops. Let's get rid of that. Here's uh, student number two. Here's their work. And again, we have a pricing summary here. We have the information broken down. One difference between this spreadsheet and my spreadsheet. My spreadsheet, I, I had you know, the units of measure out here to the right. Here we have the unit of measure information buried in the title, which is OK. We have some formatting to indicate uh, some calculations or some special cells. And again, we have some bolding on the really key numbers. And, uh, you know, modular approach. So we've got the labor stuff separate from the material stuff, separate from the calculations down here at the bottom. So very, very easy to read, easy to, uh, easy to follow. Uh, I would make the one comment here that this is a calculated cell, this 48 man hours, and it is calculated from the number of laborers that is required and the hours per workday. Um, the only subtle change I might make to this cell would be give it some indication that it is calculated versus just straight values like these other guys. So these guys are just straight values. This guy's a calculated cell. Really hard to tell. In fact, it's a calculation that's somehow different from those other ones. But otherwise, everything's fine. And uh, again, we end up with the, uh, the same results 
for the bids at the end. So there's a few different ways you can work on this uh, spreadsheet uh, problem for bid pricing out the uh, the walls. Mm -hmm.